What's up, guys? It's Fox here. I don't know whether you've heard about Faraday Future, but I'm pretty sure that you know Jia Yueting, who's also known in the States right now as YT Jia. He's so overly talked about in the media that we all know that he escaped to the States and he later focused on Faraday Future, and it's a so called next generation super premium electric car that has not been produced yet. The company almost went bankrupt for multiple times already due to reasons like lack of funding and also the top executives leaving the company. But guess what? It's actually going public through SPAC. SPAC has been a really hot topic recently, and I find this transaction fascinating to talk about, especially during interviews. I made a video before on how I talk about business news in higher views with the example of Ant Group IPO. In that video, I talked about my spur structure situation, problem, impact, and reflection. Today, I would like to share with you on how I would talk about a transaction like this one. And since it's going to focus more on the transaction, the structure will be slightly different. The flow will basically become situation, transaction explanation, rationale, and lastly, impact. <clears throat> A news I've been following for years is YT's business empire, and recently has seen a major breakthrough. Faraday Future is going public through SPAC. The deal values the car company at 3.4 billion US dollars, and it's going to raise roughly 1 billion. Not only does it put YT in the spotlight again, it adds to the recent Wall Street SPAC frenzy. Going public itself is not surprising, but what interested me the most was why he chose to list through SPAC. Let's look at this transaction a bit more closely. How SPAC normally works is that a group of financial and business elites list a blank check company first, called Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Investors then buy into their foresight and judgment, hoping that they would acquire a promising target. In this case, the blank check company is called Property Solutions, and the promising target is Faraday Future. What I understand was that Property Solutions was formed in February 2020, and it was later listed in July. The listing raised 230 million US dollars for the SPAC, which is now entirely used for the merger with Faraday Future. The rest of 775 million US dollars came from pipe anchor investors. According to its official statement, these pipe investors include a tier one Chinese city, Geely Holdings, and other institutional investors. There are some usual benefits of SPAC, of course. For example, it's very fast and convenient. There's literally no company history or financials to be shown. The listing is almost entirely based on the sponsor's and founder's experience and reputation, and therefore it saves time on due diligence and all the paperwork. Secondly, it's much cheaper than conventional IPOs, as sponsors only need to pay about 2% of underwriting fees at the time of listing. But in this case, I personally feel that the most obvious benefit of a SPAC listing is that it can almost guarantee a successful listing, especially for a relatively difficult company like this one. Faraday Future has been notorious for its founder's credit history and a lot of past scandals. It has also been loved at by the media as a car company that is made by PowerPoints. Most importantly, the products are still at the infant stage. They are still at production tryouts. Therefore, I believe that it will be difficult for them to be listed through a traditional IPO route to convince the investors. So what does it mean for Faraday Future, for the EV industry, and for the financial market as a whole? According to the official statement, the transaction will give $738 million of cash to fund the production of FF91. They even lay out their 12-month budget and roadmap, estimating around 400 million US dollars to be needed for the launch of FF91. The transaction will give Faraday Future another and possibly the last chance to prove to the world that they are able to make premium cars not only on paper, but also in real life as promised. The transaction is also significant for the EV industry, as we see influential pipe investors like the Tier 1 Chinese City and Geely Holdings. The involvement of these players make the EV landscape in China all the more exciting, as we see tech giants, government funds, and startups are all getting a piece of pie in this field in their own ways. And lastly, more and more electric vehicles are getting listed as respect, like Fisker, Lordstown, and Nikola. Not only that some of these companies encountered fraud allegations, Average returns from SPAC mergers in the past five years have also been lower than traditional IPOs. 
Whether SPAC will become a long-term trend that actually benefits investors or simply a game that is played by Wall Street tycoons remains to be seen. But certainly, all eyes are on Friday Future for now. If successful, SPAC can open more doors for next-generation tech companies. <coughs> 终于说完了。如果面试问到这个问题呢，我大概就会以以上的这种框架来回答了。那肯定还是有很多瑕疵的。如果你们有什么其他想法的话，欢迎弹幕或者评论区留言，我们可以一起讨论。那最后我不得不夸一下法拉第未来的 PPT， 我真的做完这个视频之后能够 get 到为什么所有人都说这个是在用 PPT 来造车了。不说了，我决定好好的回去学习一下这个 PPT 的精髓。那我们下期见，拜拜。